Monterey Bay is a great place for jellyfish and we know the leatherbacks come here to feed on the juicy jellyfish. They like the stinging um, nettle jellyfish, the Chrysora. The deep waters of the ocean are like a compost. A material uh, sinks to it and degrades and winds from the northwest in this case uh, uh, cause the upper layers to move offshore and bring that deep cold water that's full of nutrients to the surface. When, they get, when that water gets in contact with sunlight, we have uh, a photosynthesis being stimulated. Plants grow, little animals grow, big animals grow. If there's not a whole progression of events that allow the jellyfish to really settle and bloom and get retained in, in these nearshore habitats, then the turtles aren't going to come in. So it's all about the biology as well as the oceanography, the biology of, of the prey. And we need to do much more to understand the trophic processes that lead to those dense aggregations of sea nettles. Um, when we're able to do that and, and understand how those prey patches develop, we may get to a, a point where we're going to be able to predict where leatherback aggregations are going to be occurring. The very productive system that we have in the California current that's led to fisheries like salmon and sardine and squid are all derived from this upwelling process that occurs in the spring and summer. It's a little bit different with the turtles because they're not feeding on that really extensive food chain. They're feeding much lower directly down to, uh, to jellyfish and things like that. But again, the jellyfish are there because there's a lot of food for them. Several leatherbacks we tagged in Jamor Smeti, West Syrian Jaya in July 2005 are approaching the California current and the continent uh, presently. We're anxious to see if those animals will make it all the way into our study area here um, off the coast of central California.